94.9 CHRW. Uh, today I have Dan from Real Friends with me. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, how was your set today? Good. It was honestly, I'd say probably in the top three of Warp Tour, if not the best one. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just like an overall general Warp Tour, like what's been a memorable experience so far? In the beginning of the tour, we played in Albuquerque, and um, the buses, all the buses have generators on the bottom that you have to open the door to keep, so it doesn't overheat during the day. Mm -hmm. And so at night, around like probably 10 o'clock, I leave, and we were parked really close to the bus next to us, and I just went right, and then the edge of the door clipped my eye. I oh, got, yeah, I got a little scar yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but yeah, that was a little <laughs> funny moment. And then uh, otherwise, it's just been warped to every day, and it's awesome. I love it. You guys have a new record coming out called Maybe This Place Is The Same, and We're Just Changing. Yes, and you got it right. Yes. Oh, I'm reading it, so. <laughs> no, but you I'm got it right. <laughs> there have been people that wrote it down that didn't get it right, so. Yeah, just how has recording been and writing for this record? It was good. It was a little, it was a little stressful. Um, it was our first like release with a label because we did everything else yeah. unsigned so just to um, more so meet deadlines because we had wanted the album to be out for warp tour and everything and um, so to meet all the deadlines with like vinyl CDs and everything it was a little bit more hectic mm -hmm. um, just because we couldn't do it necessarily at our own pace like we were yeah. used to but um, we didn't have uh, jobs anymore because we were able to focus on the band and we were able to give it as much time as we need in I guess more of a crunch time mm -hmm. since we had you know a full day instead of getting off work at five and then working on the song so um, I mean it was a little bit stressful but other than that I mean you kind of need that in there and that uh, to kind of look at it and just be just see it the finished product and just know that it's worth it mm -hmm. uh, for you what was the decision and the rational I guess uh, choosing fearless over maybe any other label um, we wanted somebody that had like a full staff that you know worked for Fearless, like not necessarily like outsourcing uh, to get their resources elsewhere for like their PR or street team, etc. Um, you know, we wanted people that were just there. We knew that we wanted to work with, and you know, and we didn't necessarily want people that would change mm -hmm. the band. And they yeah. they they came in and they said, you know, we love what Real Friends is, and you know, we just want you guys to be you guys and we just want to help so you know we still they let us record with the dude we record everything else with they let us pick who mixed it they we did artwork everything nothing changed it's just that they put the record out you mm -hmm. know and they're, they're very supportive and they you know they have a lot to bring to the table for us mm -hmm. I was working with guys like Sean O'Keefe and recording at Always Genius um, Always Be Genius was sick because um, e ever since we've been going there we, we started going there um, when it was just like a room in uh, Seth's garage and that's the dude that recorded us mm -hmm. and um like he, he went from just that room in his garage to uh, you know getting paneling on the floor and you know the sound deadening and uh, having vocal booths in there to having you know making it just a live room with a separate lounge and you know every time we go there he's just got something new everything's able to sound better and um, and he's great to work with mm -hmm. so and and he's an hour away from us and nice. it's awesome and uh, Sean it was the first time we had someone else mix the record and mm -hmm. Sean was in Chicago so it was another thing where you know we didn't really do too much back and forth online and mm -hmm. we just went up to the studio hung out with him and you know we sat in while he mixed and went like two three days it was wow, all good nice. super easy um, and just at home didn't have to stress it too much mm -hmm. uh, what can people expect from this new record um, we definitely experimented more with like dynamic and everything we wanted to instead of having you know one song you know just punch in the face a bunch and yeah. then one song is just very slow intimate we, we still kept that in some songs but then we wanted to have more songs where you'd have those highs and those lows all in the same songs mm -hmm. so so you can have you know the, after a really, really, really soft part, soft moment, and then it just, you know, more experimenting with like crescendos building everything up and having just, you know, making it more of an impact instead of just, you know, laying on the ground after one song after being beaten in the head. And then, you know, <laughs> then that's the reason you're sitting there on the yeah. ground, you know. <laughs> you kind of get beaten up a little bit and then you can sit back and take everything in, mm -hmm. I think. So, um, for maybe this place is changing, uh, 
and for the artwork the, do they both correlate within each other is, is that something done on purpose yeah um well the the idea for the artwork came together there was a like a bird feeder on the cover of the record mm -hmm. that was in my girlfriend's backyard and i saw it and that was around the time that we had decided on the album name so and i i saw that the, there were the two birds on there there was one that was intact and then there was one on top that was a little more rusted and it kind of shows like you know kind of where you were and then where you are now kind of you know some of the paint fades falls off rusts but you know you're still there and you know it, it's maybe it's not you know the place it's it's you that's changing you know it's mm -hmm. not you know you don't come back and it's like oh home sucks now it's just that you don't have anything there or, or you might not relate with anything there mm -hmm. you know that that's what we wanted to symbolize and then everything else was kind of like a homey feature to a company that because we had um our friend mitch wojcik mm -hmm. did the album art and he he did awesome putting everything together so mm -hmm. i think at least i believe you have chris uh from like moss of flames yes. on the record what was the decision to have him uh i guess do guest vocals on the record um well last year we did first like three weeks of warp tour and they did the whole thing and um chris likes a lot of different music we, we like a lot of different music he would hit us up online all the time and he'd tell kids being like yo check out real friend set this mm -hmm. time this stage and stuff and, yeah. and then we had a friend on the tour um that was working for run for cover and she's like yo chris really wants to meet you like these dudes like love you guys and then ever since then we just kicked it all the time and they're really cool dudes we nice. love Chris is there a specific song that you that you're hoping uh, resonates with people uh, coming from this record um, well, I'll say my favorite songs. Um, I like the two. Two of my favorites are there's a shorter song called "Old Book." Um, it's one of the songs on the album. There's, a, I think, there's a handful that definitely aren't within the pop punk realm. Like I don't think they're pop punk songs at all. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. It's really short, really simple to the point. Um, and then there's another one because um, we have two tracks, two title tracks for the album. Maybe this place is the same. And then the that's the intro, and the end is, and we're just changing. And then that one is my like full favorite song because I think it's able to more so encompass um, what I was talking about earlier with the din dynamic you have the softer intro and then it explodes then you back off you know and then it, it's mm -hmm. it's able to have the the landscape and the dynamic with it just a couple of true and false questions okay. uh, first true and false uh, I don't maybe not on this tour but in previous tours you would actually bring an n64 around and you would play video games in the green room before before playing true and false okay um, it wasn't an N64, but um, our old merch guy had like a suitcase that um, when you open it up, it has an HDMI screen, and then you just put in like, you know, Xbox, and then you hook it up and plug it into the wall, and you got an Xbox right there. Nice. So I did that. Yeah, I, I played Xbox. Yeah. I never never had, we have N64 now on Warp Tour, though. Oh, okay. So Mario Party 2, like every day. <laughs> you guys fight over, like, Mario Party? It, yes. Yes, I will say, uh, I've played with our guitar player Dave before, like, way, way before the band, and there have been some scenes with him, <laughs> and then, um, like, if I'm not playing and I'm in my bunk, like, I'll, and they're playing, I'll hear them scream. Screaming like we at the top of our lungs. <laughs> Somebody's star gets stolen, coins get stolen, someone gets a hidden star. Like <laughs> shit gets real. Nice. Uh, the other true and false is actually Brian, your drummer, used yes. to want to be a teacher, or he was a teacher. Um, I would say used to, because he did. He went to college the most out of any of us. He went almost, I think, like three and a half years. I got, I did two years, got my associates, but I, I think he used to want to be a teacher. Nice. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Uh, maybe this place is... Uh, oh, man, I just messed up. I'm maybe this place is the same and we're just changing. Can you do it for me now? Maybe this place is the same and we're just changing. Yeah, it's almost out. So uh, make sure to grab, I believe, July 22nd. Did it's, I get there? It's out July 22nd. Is my, that was my Canadian voice. I don't know if that's... Well, I don't, I don't, have, I don't oh. have that. I don't have a. I don't think I have that kind of accent. Any Canadian says out or about. Oh yeah, where are you going? You're going over. Someone. Yeah. Oh. Someone last year was like. So people say a boot. Uh, oh no. I don't know. I don't think I've heard no. that one yet. A yeah, boot? it's a boat. A, a boat. A boot. About. <laughs> I don't know. We hear and we hear Americans go about. About. That's how I say about. Anyways, <laughs> it's coming out July 22nd. Be sure to pick it up from Fearless Records online, in store, whatever Wherever you can. Download it for free. I don't care. <laughs> I didn't pay to record it. There you go. All right. See you guys later.